Good morning. Um, today will most likely be our last class for the course of uh, Acts of the Apostles and the life of Paul. So far, we've uh, seen how Paul interrogated. Uh, we watched how under two uh, governors, he had to give a defense for himself. So he was sent from Jerusalem to Caesarea and over there, he was under Felix and then he came under Festus. Felix heard the gospel, um, but he did not make a decision. He just said that at a convenient time, he would hear Paul out again. And when Festus was there, uh, in order to get, a, um, a, in order to find a case against Paul, he heard him out in the presence of King Agrippa. Uh, King Agrippa and uh, his uh, partner Bernice, like they were, they were uh, visiting uh, Caesarea at that time, and we know that he he defend Paul defended himself. He talks about his encounter uh, with. Uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus and how he has been called in order to turn people from darkness into light. And we saw how he repented before God and he committed himself to the heavenly vision. And what a great inspiration for us to see a man um, give his whole life for that vision and assignment. And he was driven. He was completely taken up by that heavenly vision. And we saw how he stated all these things. Uh, however, Agrippa, he he makes a, a statement without confirming his uh, uh, you know belief in the Lord Jesus. He just states in verse twenty eight, "You almost persuade me to become a Christian." And we saw how um, almost being a Christian is not being a Christian. You know, almost being a believer is not being a believer. You either are or you're not. So there's a very clear demarcation uh, and salvation is a very clear thing that we must receive from Christ with our receiving of what Jesus has done on the cross. And unfortunately, in the recorded, uh, uh, you know, the scriptures here, we don't see King Agrippa making that decision. And um, he uh, lets go of a great opportunity. Now, one more thing that we saw happen is Paul makes an appeal to Caesar because he realizes that uh, people are not making quick decisions and that he would end up being here, uh, you know, under under their custody for no reason. Um, and uh, because he makes an appeal to Caesar, he needs to be sent to Caesar. After hearing out Paul, both uh, Festus and Agrippa realize that there's no proper uh, charge that they can make against him. But since he has asked to go to Caesar, there's no other way now. They cannot let him uh, free. They have to send him to Caesar. So that, that's where we were. And now starts the voyage uh, to Rome. So that's where he needs to go in order to uh, talk about uh, his sort of you know defend himself and uh, clarify that he has done nothing wrong against the law uh, with regard to the faith or with regard to the land so that's where he's headed now so chapter 27 and chapter 28 are about that uh, we'll see how the journey actually happens so you would find you know names of places mentioned here uh, and uh, also the incident that takes place when he reaches the island of Mar Malta where there will, there will be a crashing of the ship. Um, so these are things that we will observe. Some people uh, talk about Paul's fourth missionary journey. Uh, this is because Paul going from Caesarea to Rome is kind of considered another missionary journey. Uh, however, we know that there are three prominent missionary journeys which we talked of earlier, uh, which describe uh, the, the most part of Apostle Paul's ministry. So this fourth missionary journey, you may find people may talk about it. You could consider it as a missionary journey or, uh, you know, even if you don't, that's up to you. Uh, so why do people call it a missionary journey? Because he never stopped ministering. Even when he was on that voyage, you know, his testimony. And when he goes to Rome, he's imprisoned there. His, uh, you know, manner of ministering to people. That is part of the missionary um, aspect of Paul. And that's why maybe this is considered as the fourth missionary journey. And regarding the 
death of apostle paul uh, we don't really have a clear record there uh, is much speculation in uh, ad 64 uh, he was martyred that's what uh, that's what yeah, um, extra biblical reports state and um, uh, that he was uh, beheaded in rome how exactly on what charges uh, at least in the book of acts we don't have uh, clarity regarding that matter uh, also you would notice uh, that chapter 27 chapter 28 it is uh, it is not a final conclusion because luke is still writing about the things that are going on and uh, very abruptly in acts 28 the chap the book will close okay uh, and it it seems like something more was to come but maybe luke couldn't write it or what really happened you know we don't know uh, but it ends very abruptly and we don't really read about the end of paul's uh, life here in this book so that's a summary i just gave us a summary we can quickly look at um, what happens in chapter 27 here uh, as i stated there's a journey happening so let me um, show you a a map to make things clearer okay i think i have kind of mixed up the map here but yeah let me see if we can get something yeah there are lots of maps we can look at this one Okay. Apologies, everyone. That map doesn't seem to come up. Maybe I can just show us from. We have one. Mm, share my screen. Yes, I hope you can see this. This is the best I could do. Mm, yeah. Okay. So this makes uh, things so much easier for us. What I'll do is I will uh, go on. talking about the journey as the map is up so you know that way you'll have a lot of clarity so we find that uh, paul sets sail he uh, needs to sail to italy where rome is and uh, uh, he goes along with some prisoners all right um he is overseen by a centurion by the name of uh, from the augustan regiment and um, this is these are the circumstances under which he is actually traveling he goes uh, by a ship and he sails um, along the coast of asia there are other people who are accompanying him as well we have a name called as aristarchus uh, he is a macedonian from uh, thessalonica uh, and uh, you know if you remember aristarchus second is we've spoken about them earlier uh, and uh, aristarchus is a name uh, he is from uh, by the name 
what commentator says he's probably from a very rich family and uh, second is we would find another name who was also one of paul's um uh, supporters or co-workers second is is more like a slave's name uh, so we, uh, paul had people from different sections of society actually working together with him in a team so this time there's a mention of aristarchus who was also with paul so now uh, we will see the journey uh, goes via sidon okay so if you can see they are moving from here caesarea right this is where he was imprisoned for 2 years without any uh, proper uh, outcome he moves to sidon as you can see here alongside he does not go there but alongside and then we will read of a couple of other names so he goes on from there to cyprus i hope you're all able to notice it yeah okay so i'll just go on so uh, cyprus and uh, over there what they notice is you know when the journey takes place um we know that when uh, someone is sailing via the ship the winds make the the biggest difference so as long as the winds are um just right uh, they can have a comfortable journey but in this case by the time they come to cyprus they find that the winds are quite contrary or that there are very strong winds uh, and so uh, they they've really got to make a decision you know, if uh, something goes wrong uh, anyway they they continue on their journey and they uh, sail on uh, off of uh, sicilia pamphylia uh, they come to this place called myra uh, there is a city by the name of lycia they come there and uh, uh, you know they they then uh, find another ship because you know they need to move on from there so they find an alexandrian ship to italy they board that ship now uh they slowly began to sail and arrived in uh nidus okay so i hope you can picture that place are you able to see all these places here we are okay nidus so this is where we are they came via uh, myra myra is here then they uh, got into an alexandrian ship they move on to this place known as nidus so now what happens yeah so the winds uh, did not permit them right to sail on as we said uh, things were not looking all that good um, so they took uh, whatever route they they um, took some shelter um sailed under the shelter of crete and uh, finally they came to a place known as fair heavens okay you don't have to remember all these names i'm just telling you because that's how he sailed so anyway so they went on from there and uh, at this point okay uh, paul realizes that something is off with the weather and uh, he actually shares um uh, his his view so i'll read from verse 9 to verse 12 on the warning that paul brings to the people on the ship okay so the, uh, it says uh, now when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the uh, the fast was already over paul advised them saying men i perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much with much loss not only of the cargo and ship but also our lives nevertheless the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by paul and because the harbor was not suitable to winter in the majority advised to set, set sail from there also if by any means they could reach phoenix a harbor of crete opening toward the southwest and northwest and winter there so uh, this is stating that paul had a prophetic word prophetic knowledge about what would be the end result so he's telling them it's not going to be good we uh, know that the ship also will be destroyed so will some people so take heed to the warning however they went more by the facts and uh, logic than paul's instruction and then you know the next portion describes how they continued from new heavens and they got into trouble there was a tempest 
okay and there are, there's that whole description of uh, what exactly happened on that uh, um, ship and how they try to maneuver the ship so i i'm not going to get into the details of uh, the shipwreck uh, but maybe you could uh, go back and read it up you know line by line but one thing that we notice uh, that happened on the ship is uh, there is an encouragement from god you know, paul realizes uh, that uh, this this will end in disaster uh, but god gives him another word where he says that okay don't worry nothing will happen uh, that you will end up landing you know safely in a uh, in a in an island okay and that island is malta so i didn't go over the ship scenario i would just leave it for us to read it it's um, a lot of details of what exactly you know they did to um, survive in the tempest okay so now let's just move on to acts chapter 28 okay so uh here in our map we can see that they came to lasia fair heavens and as they went from here towards italy is when there was a tempest so they were supposed to go to italy directly but the winds were um, contrary and they had to make a crash landing at malta so that's what happened there and uh, uh, over there they stayed for about 3 months even in those 3 months uh, paul was ready to minister you know god um, worked mightily through him so we see in uh, malta i'll just come to chapter 28 when they come over um uh, you know they've crash landed right and uh, they they want to find some food they want to find some warmth and um, you know the there is a fire which is made where these people uh, sit down to rest but at that point a uh, a viper comes out of um, you know that that fire and uh, it uh, sort of um, okay where are we chapter 28 yeah verse 3 so they gathered the sticks uh, there was a viper that fastened on the hands of paul so when the natives the people of malta saw it um, you know this is this also talks about how people uh, make conclusions about who is godly who is not godly we saw this back in uh, lystra as well when uh, there was the healing of a man who was lame for a very long time uh, they looked at paul and barnabas and they said oh these are some greek gods um, but when they did not yield to the worship of the people uh, they started you know getting angry with uh, paul and barnabas and we, we know how he was stoned uh, and brought out of the city so the opinions of people were changing right similarly even here in the island of malta when the viper fastened to paul's hand uh, they said this must be a murderer and that is the reason even though he escaped the shipwreck here on the island again death is following him so that was the way they viewed what happened but then uh, paul in verse 5 he shakes off that viper and nothing happens to him but when they see that he is fine they suddenly start saying they change their minds uh, verse 6 says and they are saying that uh, seems like this is a god okay so you know uh, how how unstable people's opinions are uh, about anyone and over here with regard to paul uh, but thank god you know paul's identity and his security was not based on what people thought of him but it was based on who god uh, said he was and what god wanted him to do so anyway he didn't let that uh, matter to him uh, he he was there he was safe even after this incident of that poisonous viper and uh, following this we noticed that there was a man by the name of uh, 
Publius. He was a leading citizen of the island of Malta and uh, his uh, father was sick. Okay. Now, Paul, what he does is he goes to this person and he prays and the, he rebukes the fever and the fever leaves him. So when Paul does this, um, you know, there, there is some sense of uh, joy, some sense of, uh, um, you know, uh, like people are experiencing deliverance. Now, we know that Paul went to places like Ephesus and Philippi and uh, intentionally did ministry. But when we notice what happened to Paul, he is on the island of Malta, you could say accidentally, isn't it? Uh, but then, even in that place where it's seemingly an accident, Paul is still moving in the power of God. And uh, when there is a healing that takes place okay, of fever. The island, the people of the island, okay, they encounter the power of God. So um, it, it is like, uh, you know, uh, discipling at every place that Paul went. So there was no vacation that he took, even when, you know, he was uh, not officially on a missionary journey. So uh, people were ministered to and we noticed that many others, right, came to him to be ministered. So it became a ministry opportunity for Paul uh, and uh, he was honored for the way in which he demonstrated God's glory. Now, the island of Malta proved to be a good place for him because it all turned out well okay but uh, we know that his intention was to go to italy rome so from the island of malta he now moves further to rome uh, now they come to rome and uh, in rome okay they are stationed they are put there uh, however you know paul is put in a prison prison like um, set up it's actually supposed to be a prison but he's under home arrest so it was one of those concepts where uh, you know they would keep the prisoners uh, or the accused but not uh, because he's not yet condemned fully condemned so he was kept under house arrest uh, with restrictions and uh, some soldiers to watch him but at the same time, he was allowed to have people come over to his house. Now, we are told that Paul was there for a fairly long time and he utilized this time to minister to people who came to his um, this rented house or you know this, this place where he was under home arrest. So for two years, Two years he was there. When we look at verse 30, that's what it states. So Paul dwelt two years in his own rented house and received all who came to him. Verse 31 says, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. So the good part of being under this uh, home imprisonment was he continued to minister. Uh, we, As you read, into this passage, you will notice that he was teaching the people morning till evening. Verse 23 will tell us that. So people were coming, you know, they were visiting him and he was teaching them from the uh, scriptures. He was teaching the doctrine, uh, establishing people in the word of God, even under Homeris. So can you imagine, we said in the school of Tyrannus, he taught you know, for long hours and he equipped people there. Here in Rome, from morning till evening, so how much of content he would have actually taught? Okay, so he was a man who was for ministry. He was a man who was sold out. That's another word we can use uh, for ministry. And his life is completely marked with ministry. And as I shared earlier, uh, Acts 28 ends so abruptly. We only know that Paul was under house arrest, continuing to teach people. 
and what happened after that you know, we don't have any um, clue why uh, it stopped at chapter 28 but one thing that we always say regarding act the book of acts is yes it's about the life of paul yes it's about the life of the early church um but it is about god and the way he orchestrated uh, his the the revelation of his power and glory through his church right so though it is the acts of the apostles and the life of paul it's about god it's about god's glory it's about god's power it's about the holy spirit and how he directed things um uh, you know especially after the baptism in the holy spirit so there are a lot of commentators who say that uh, the holy spirit has not stopped working and uh, the book of acts ending abruptly uh, it may also be god's way of saying that yes paul did his part the leaders did their part but the work of the spirit continues and even today in our lives right something like what happened in the book of acts the way people were filled with the spirit they heard from god they went to different places they um, ministered to uh, into people's lives and they established churches these are all things that are continuing and maybe that's one of the reasons why uh, luke never finished it okay uh, we are acts 29 there are commentators who say that we are acts 29 and the, the holy spirit continues to do his work in us and through us right now so uh, that's in gist about the occurrences of the book of acts especially in closing a post um, paul's journey from caesarea uh, i didn't go into the details uh, of the shipwreck but i request us to kindly take some time to go ahead and read it up uh, so now what i'll do is i'll take us through a timeline okay of uh, uh, the book of acts and uh, the you know the life of apostle paul so let me share the screen with us that will be more helpful here we go so just summarized for our understanding um the timelines of how things happened so we said earlier acts chapter 2 to acts chapter 8 is for a duration of about um 8 years so ad 30 to ad 38 and we talked about the birth of the church the emergence of leaders the growth of the church and people beginning to step out move out to other places to plant churches so uh, we could sum that up and say that the church was in revival right uh, now after this phase we find that uh, the next couple of years this is from ad 38 to ad 47 about a decade uh, the life of paul receives the highlight or the focus so we find that paul encounters you know, saul encounters uh, jesus on the road to damascus and then he's talked about as paul in the coming passages he becomes this mighty warrior for uh, christ and uh, he initially begins serving in the church of antioch in acts chapter 13 when the leaders of the church are ministering to the holy spirit in prayer Paul and Barnabas are called for a missionary uh, ministry. So that is still Acts chapter thirteen, uh, and we see how you know they went and ministered to Sergius Paulus, uh, and 
a very influential person and by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a sorcerer, Elimus, who's actually stopping um, uh, Sergius Paulus from receiving from God. But Paul ministers in the power of the Spirit. That's another important part to note. He was ministering in the power of the Spirit. So these are some occurrences uh, in the next decade. So now we've gone past roughly uh, 18 years. 18 some people say two decades okay so uh, that's as much as uh, has happened now moving on to acts chapter 13 to acts chapter 28 would be the next 20 years all right so the total of uh, uh, the time span of the book of acts is roughly about 40 years that's uh, the duration and even paul's ministry we could say about 30 years is the time that he had to minister. People also state that he would have been uh, of the age of 33 years when he encountered Christ. And then another 30 years of ministry. So by the time he uh, was beheaded in Rome, uh, he would be somewhere around, you know, six. 60 to 64 years that's the estimation uh, but he made the most use of uh, his time to serve the lord in those 30 years of his ministry so uh, from acts 13 the focus goes back to the life of paul and his missionary journeys so we talked about the first missionary journey where he went into the galatia region and he established you know um, uh, small churches and he comes back strengthening the churches that's about two years he spends two years in the first missionary journey so that is somewhere between ad 44 and ad 46 now, Paul's second missionary journey uh, is for about um, three years, AD 49 to AD 52. And Paul's third missionary journey is uh, from AD 53 to AD 58, about four years. Okay, so this is like the timelines. In Paul's second missionary journey, we uh, see that he goes into the Macedonian region. He wants to go to Asia, but he's called into the Macedonian region. He goes there and there is a mighty impact in places like Philippi, Thessalonica, Beria, uh, you know, and uh, then he kind of uh, goes 18 months, he ministers in Corinth. He makes a brief stop at Ephesus, doesn't minister there, but uh, followed by that, he goes back to uh, his uh, base church. Okay. Now, in the third missionary journey, he comes back to this place known as Ephesus, and we know how he established the school of Tyrannus there. Powerful ministry took place. So um, the two major places that we have to remember is in the second missionary journey, Corinth is that great city where he ministered. The third missionary journey, Ephesus, is that great place where he ministered. So there he taught in the school of uh, Tyrannus and uh, you know then he moves on to other places. So there are some epistles also which Paul wrote which uh, have also been enlisted here. So in the second missionary journey, Paul is said to have written to the Thessalonians. Why? Because he left in a hurry. You remember? There was persecution and he had to move quickly. And so there were matters that he wanted to convey to them. And the best way he did that was by writing letters to them. So from Corinth, he wrote back to the Thessalonians. So those are his first epistles, first and second Thessalonians. Now, uh, the next set of letters that he wrote was during his third missionary journey from Ephesus. He writes back to the Galatians. Remember the Galatia region. So he writes to the Galatians. Uh, he also writes to the Corinthians because in the second missionary journey, that's where he was for 18 months. So he writes to the Corinthians. Now, again, you know, as he um, is in the third missionary journey, he writes the second letter to the Corinthians. So first and second Corinthians is written. And from Greece, he writes a letter to the Romans. He's never been to Rome. 
we all are quite clear on that because he was still uh, you know uh, continuing to do his church planting uh, but there were believers in rome he had heard of he writes to them he has not physically gone to rome it's only uh, for that interrogation that he will actually move to rome later on okay so these are some of the epistles which paul writes in his third missionary journey after that we know paul uh, he went he completed the third missionary journey went to jerusalem uh, and he was arrested right for false accusations from there he was sent to caesarea there his case didn't move two years he was there in caesarea so ad 58 to ad 60 is uh, when he was caught up and uh, we find that uh, uh, you know uh, he appealed to caesar he moves out of caesarea the journey the ship journey happens with the shipwreck and everything uh, but he reaches rome and in rome he is again imprisoned okay so how long was he there in rome it is said again for about 3 years he was there and uh, there he writes letters during his imprisonment to the colossians he writes philemon ephesians and philippians okay so that's where he's at and it is said that after this imprisonment he still had um, another four years there was a, a period of release which was given to him and uh, during that period of release he wrote first timothy and titus and there is a speculation that he could have written the book of hebrews but the writer of the book of hebrews does not identify himself uh, and so it becomes very difficult there are people who say that um, uh, you know maybe uh, barnabas wrote it apollos wrote it or priscilla wrote it so there are many speculations about the book of hebrews but most likely paul wrote it now why didn't he identify himself we don't know it uh, it is written in a different way usually he'll say paul an apostle uh, of jesus christ but he doesn't introduce himself in the book of hebrews so we don't know who wrote it but maybe paul wrote it and this was during the period of his release and finally there is the uh, second roman imprisonment of paul where uh, you know that is kind of the end his martyrdom comes after that but during the second imprisonment is where he writes this his uh, second epistle to timothy second timothy and that is his last epistle you know how in that epistle he uh, he writes uh, i have fought a good fight of faith i have finished the race why is he stating things like this because paul sensed that his end was very near so that second epistle to timothy was the last one which he wrote and uh, you know after which he was beheaded so in total paul wrote 13 letters to the different churches he wrote two letters during his second missionary journey he wrote um five letters during his third missionary journey he wrote four letters when he was imprisoned in rome okay during his uh, first imprisonment during his release he wrote two or maybe three episodes if hebrews is included and finally last imprisonment he wrote one episode to timothy his spiritual son the final one second timothy after which is the martyrdom of apostle paul so uh, his life uh, it is said that um, ad 68 was roughly around the time when you know paul's um, life journey comes to an end so i'm hoping that this summary makes things clear for all of us i will post this document um, for uh, the online students as well as the e learning students so you know you will have a copy of this which will give you uh, incredible clarity on how things actually panned out so with this we will um, wrap up the course on the book of acts 
and uh, the assignment has already been posted. So you could complete that, which will lead you to completing this course uh, for the semester. So if there are any, um, anything that you want to ask or share, we can do that before we pray and uh, complete this session. Um, I just want to say the class was very detailed. Oh, is it okay? And and okay. I'm so thankful for it because uh, I've read Acts so many times, but uh, I've learned so many new things, uh, and the way you uh, structured it was good. Uh, like the places we were able to understand the whole picture. So yeah, oh, thank you. So please God, I'm, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jafina. I'm encouraged to hear that. Yeah, don't get lost in the details. The details are just because we are studying the book, but in application, we don't really need it. Uh, but it brings the story, it makes it alive. That's why we did that. Uh, any other takeaways from this? <laughs> That's good to know. Yes. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for for the lectures and all along from where we started from and uh, with the Book of Acts. It has been a pleasure. It was Thanks. an enjoying journey. So keep it up and. Uh, I think my colleagues and I should not only be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lubega. Thank you. I'm so glad uh, to hear from you. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, John. Thank you that uh, you've learned from this course. Uh, but please do revisit the Book of Acts. It's very interesting. Uh, and I would encourage you to also go back and read um, uh, David Guzik's uh, commentary, Enduring Word. It's extremely detailed. I tried not to bring in more details because you know, you're know you already <laughs> overloaded with uh, uh, you know several, several things. But if you, if you can um, make time for that, Please go through uh, his commentary. It's excellent. Uh, that will also bring this whole scene, all the scenes alive for us. Please do go watch that movie that I told you, The Acts of the Apostles. It's um, as per the scriptures. So uh, not the depiction so much, but it goes in line verse by verse. So they've tried to write it as Luke has written in the book of Acts. So that also will help you to understand Acts well. Yes, thank you, Subhashis. I see your comment. God bless you. So uh, God bless you all and may the Lord use you as a firebrand like Apostle Paul. Uh, each one of you is chosen by the Lord, appointed to bear much fruit for his glory. And God is preparing you by equipping you uh, with his word in a detailed way. So uh, I'm excited for uh, each of your lives, each of your ministries. So let me just pray over all of us and we'll close off. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the account of the book of Acts. Lord, we are amazed to see uh, what you can do. We are amazed to see what uh, people of God can do, filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are amazed to see how you speak, Lord, uh, to your people and uh, your leading, oh God. And Father God, uh, uh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that uh, people, communities, uh, regions, nations come alive with the proclamation of the gospel. Father, we thank you for the wisdom that uh, uh, the apostles and ministers of God carried to proclaim your word, Father God, in different settings, Father, in different contexts. And Father, we just uh, are uh, so moved to see the response of people uh, from all walks of life, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that, uh, um, Lord, Anyone who believed, Father God, Lord, uh, could become part of your family. And today, Lord, we, we are stewarding the same gospel. We are empowered by the same Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray, Lord, 
as uh, we we shared acts 29 father god we are part of what the holy spirit is doing in our time in our age lord um, uh, through each of our lives father god we pray let your kingdom extend through each of our life father let the power of your spirit lord be demonstrated in a very real way we pray god that uh, many souls will be brought into your kingdom lord and uh, father that your name will be glorified thank you lord for every student the churches they represent the families they represent god father god continue to build them up in you uh, thank you lord that each one uh, is a firebrand for the glory of your name in jesus name we pray amen 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 god bless you all do great things uh, for god uh, do great things with the power of the holy spirit all the best for your uh, assignment god bless thank you pastor thank you thank you bye